built on? What the heck is that? Primal Inspired Keto, my passion for food, and my ketogenic lifestyle led me to explore foods, techniques, and flavors that successfully fueled our ancestors. Join me as I explore recipes old and new and create some of our own. Well, hello. Welcome back to Primal Inspired Keto. I've worked a lot recently on preparing to release this series of videos on biltong. And I've mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, biltong is uh, a dried meat, um, mostly beef and, and a game animal or something like that. But we're only going to talk really about beef. I've made some venison biltong, which was really good. Um, but we're just going to talk about beef. Um, biltong is a dried, uh, and, and I, I phrase it as a coriander beef, because coriander is the, the roasted coriander is the main ingredient. And um, ever since the first time I was introduced to biltong, uh, it was in some conversations with friends, business associates, uh, about how I really liked making jerky. But I was never really a big fan of of the... the um, uh, preservatives and things that were in jerky and and it's so far away from what um, uh, those those traditionally dried and that's where the primal inspired comes from uh, the the dried meat that our ancestors did so you see you know videos of, of people smoking things on sticks and stuff like that but it was way more than that um, and so those those uh, uh, flavors those uh, processes still exist around the world in different cultures, um, the pastromi, I think it's called, uh, in parts of Europe and and Beltong in Africa, Penaton and in the Americas um, and some South American ones. I'm not even going to try to pronounce. I'm going to learn more about them with with time because these are the things I want to add to it uh, and to the whole um, uh, world of of dried meat. Uh, it's a great source of protein. It uh, if you use the right salts and the right herbs and spices, which I've spent a lot of time tracking down uh, the way things are supposed to taste. I had purchased, uh, since this, you know, coriander was one of the main ingredients, I had person purchased a large quantity of coriander that um, I'm probably going to just feed to the birds because here I thought it was the right stuff and it wasn't the right stuff. Uh, who knows how old this stuff was and um, uh, it completely lacked flavor. It was just mostly texture and and once I found real coriander, the stuff that I use in my seasonings, uh, I was amazed. It's it's citrusy and it's it's aromatic and it's really really incredible. So there was so much to do with getting the right seasonings, and and I think I've achieved that with with my biltong coriander beef seasoning, um, using good salt and, and and a lot of the good ingredients. And um, there's a lot of you know variations and changes you can do yourself, but I'm going to work on in this series just my basics. Um, it's not dehydrated, it's dried, and that creates a completely different flavor profile. It doesn't come off as um, uh, like a jerky is, where it's kind of chewy and whatever. And this can be chewy, but, but it, it, it's, it's almost like the difference between uh, uh, a canned ham and a real cured Virginia ham. It, the, it, it has a real flavor difference, or prosciutto, you know, where where it's been aged for a year under seasonal climates and all that kind of stuff. We, we don't go that far, um, which I'd like to try, though. But, but um, and, and that brings up a topic, that, that this is um, naturally preserved dried beef in this recipe. And saying that, uh, it's not something that'll stay on a shelf forever. So you make it in small batches and you consume it as you go. Um, you have to be uh, smart about how you're handling this stuff. It's not like, it's not like, um, you know, out of the package uh, jerky that you can keep on the shelf for years, and and it's oily, and you know who knows what's in there. Um, this stuff, you know exactly what's in there, uh, to, particularly if you're going to get, uh, you know, grass-fed beef from a butcher, where you know you might even get a chance to know the cow before it's butchered. Um, that's important stuff. So I, I feel very uh, passionate about this topic of, of uh, dried preserved meats. It's what started this whole thing. Please, uh, if, if you're interested in this series, uh, click subscribe. Um, send some comments. Let me know what you think. Um, click the bell so you get the updates on these. I'm going to put them in their own separate subfolder so that you can find them easily and, and refer back to them. Um, 
and uh, it, it I'll have the links to my uh, my newly uh, um, created website that I sell the the products and, and give information, the recipes and stuff like that, um, that make it very easy to do the biltong. So we have the main coriander beef, which is the traditional biltong, as best as I can tell. Um, I have a South African friend that uh, that kept me on the right path, uh, you know, because it was easy to go back to the uh, the beef jerky kind of thing where where it's uh, you know it got the teriyaki flavor and all these different things to to just go with the 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 real primal herbs that really make it um, you know the the traditional flavor. Um, so, so I do have a variation that I really enjoy. It's it's uh, it's created with the same seasonings, some of the same seasonings that are in my my um, my jerk seasoning. So it's got some heat to it. It's got all those really great warm. Um, uh, you know, uh, a lot more allspice and things like that. More like a, a you know, a Caribbean jerk seasoning, which, which, uh, kind of magnifies uh, a lot of those uh, traditional flavors. Um, so anyway, we'll we'll get to all those sort of things. So um, I'm going to keep this video short and uh, look in the next couple of days to have the first video on prepping the meat, and then we're going to. Um, uh, it's a, it's a multiple stage process where you. Um, where you cut the meat, you brine it in uh, in vinegar and Worcestershire with a little bit of the the, uh, the actual seasoning mix that goes in there. You you rub it uh, with the seasoning itself. You apply that to it and then let that sit. And that draws out a lot of the the uh, moisture that's in the meat. It fir starts to firm up, and um, uh, it, it incorporates a lot of those flavors. And then there's an additional processing step if you're going to make stickies. Um, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, but but you know that's just what we'll call them. <laughs> they're they're very thin, quickly processed, and that's that's one of the cool things about this. That you might say, oh, this takes a week to make, um, or so. But no, if you cut the pieces in different sizes, you have um, uh, it delivers the meat to you at different times. So if you're if you're going with uh, the the thin pieces, they dry much quicker. The thicker pieces that kind of get a different flavor, uh, the flavors change over time depending on how aged or or naturally dried this this uh, this meat is, um, and and it, and it intensifies. So so depending on where you like the flavor, you just keep trying it. So so if you have thick ones and thin ones and stickies and all that kind of stuff, you, you can take them out and then and then as you're getting another batch ready, you just pop another one in the cube and off you go. Um, I, I like that approach. It gives me. It gives me some of this to grab and go, and some that uh, I slice up. Um, you know, um, you know, grab a couple hunks of cutting board and one of my cleavers, and um, uh, you know, bring it to a, a you know a football game over a friend's house and slice it up, and everybody gets uh, gets to enjoy it. It's um, you know, it's good stuff. It really is good stuff. So uh, there's there's a lot to do, a lot to learn, a lot to uh, share, and I look forward to it. So um, follow along. I think you'll like it. Thanks.